On behalf of Pastor Joel Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this lesson, Lord God, and we thank you, Father God, for our viewers. Father God, we pray that everyone, Father God, in clarity to get, at, get all that you have for them to get this morning. So again, God rewards obedience. We're coming out of Genesis, the 41st chapter, the 25th through the 33rd verse, the 37th through the 40th verse, and the 50th through the 52nd verse. In class, our lesson aimed this morning is that we will agree that God rewarded Joseph's faithfulness with success in Egypt, determined to be God and rejoice in God's providential care during times of suffering. Again, our title this morning is God rewards obedience amen everybody likes a reward right amen everybody has an expectation of some shape form of fashion amen everybody likes to be rewarded amen when we were children amen if you remember uh being in preschool and you go in and the teacher would give you a smiley face for doing good amen or for acting right in class amen talking about a reward a reward means to compensate, to recompense, to pay that which is given in recognition of an act. In many occasions, even in the military, we were recognized for doing well. Amen. For those that served in the military. Likewise, on our jobs in the civilian sector, we find out that many times we're rewarded for doing well. How many of y'all know that we're going to receive a reward? Amen. How many of y'all know that we've already received, amen, a reward? Amen. One that I'm talking about salvation. Amen. Who receives a reward? That's a question for the class this morning as we go into this lesson entitled God Rewards Obedience. If God rewards obedience, my question to the class this morning is who receives a reward. Is it only those that do well? I say to you this morning that everyone receives a reward. There's what we call a reward of the righteous. Amen. The scripture teaches us that God rewards those who obey him with the blessings of salvation from sin and eternal life. Second Samuel, the 22nd chapter, the 25th verse reads, therefore, the Lord hath recompensed me according to what? My righteousness, according to my cleanliness in his eyesight. Hebrews, the third chapter, the 14th verse says, for we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the Lord. And likewise, we have a reward of righteousness. We also have a reward of wicked. Amen. The reward of wicked, it says, evildoers will also receive a reward appropriate to their wickedness. Second Samuel, the third chapter in the 39th verse says, and I am this day weak, though anointed king and these men of, of the sons of Azura, be too hard for me, the Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Revelation, the 20th chapter, and the 15th verse says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hey, everybody will receive a reward. The question is, what type of reward will you receive? Amen. We want to receive a reward of obedience, as our title says this morning. Obedience meaning compliance with an order. I'm talking about compliance to God's orders. A request or law or submission to another's authority. We're talking about being submitted to God's authority. The scripture teaches us that obedience 
is the proper response to God's acts, promises, and his commands. I said obedience mm -hmm, is the proper response. There's many responses, but obedience is the proper response. I'm not talking about the one that we always choose. I'm talking about the proper response. Mm -hmm. We have, granted, we have choice, but we don't always make the right choice. The right choice mm -hmm, uh -huh, is uh, obedience to God's acts, promises, and his commands. Amen? Genesis, the 22nd chapter, and the 18th verse says, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast what, obeyed my voice. Genesis 4 through 5, it says, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham did what? Obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. How many of y'all know that we must keep the commandments, the statutes, and the laws of God? Amen? Glory to God. We should. Amen? Don't mean that we always do, but we should. Amen? Glory to God. God is good, isn't he? I'm talking about God's reward for obedience. We're going to go into this lesson this morning. We're going to go ahead and read the scripture. Glory to God. The scripture this morning I'm going to start out with Genesis, the 41st chapter, the 25th through the 33rd verse. Then we're going to move on to the 37th through the 40th verse. And then likewise, we're going to go on to the 50th through the 52nd verse. I'm going to ask that you read along with me, please. The 25th verse says, And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, mm -hmm, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good king kind are seven years, and the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. And the seventh then and ill favorite kin that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the, this thing, is the thing which I spoke unto, unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh. What, what God, God is, is about, about to do, he, he showeth unto, unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt and, and the famine, famine shall, shall consume, consume the, land. the land. And the plenty shall not, known, shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. For it shall be very grievous. And, and for, for that, that dream, the dream was dubbed, dubbed unto Pharaoh twice. Mm -hmm. it, it is because, because the, thing the thing is established, established by, God, by God. And God, God will, will surely bring, bring it, it to pass. pass. Now, therefore... Let Pharaoh look out a man, discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. 37 verse. And the, and the thing, thing was good, good in the, in the eyes, eyes of Pharaoh, of Pharaoh and, and in the, the eyes, eyes of, of all, all his, his servants. servants. Amen. Glory to God. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Joseph for as, as much, much as God, God has shown Joseph thee all this, this there is none, none so discreet and wise as thou God. art. Amen. Glory to God. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And unto Joseph, Joseph was born two sons before, before the years of famine, famine came, which Anath the daughter of Potiphar, priest of An, born unto, unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God saith, he hath made me forgot all my toil and all my father's house. 
in the, the name, name of the second, second called he Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Amen. Hey, thank God for the reading of his word. Amen. Again, we came out of Genesis, the 41st uh, chapter, the 25th through the 33rd verse. Likewise, the 37th through the 40th verse and the 50th through the 52nd verse. The question here is, who should be obedient? Amen. This morning, as we go into this lesson, who is it that should be obedient? Uh, is it just a, uh, our leaders? Amen. Is it just uh, the pastor or the evangelist? Amen. The deacons, amen. Is it just, amen, the ministers, amen? Is it just the Sunday school teachers, amen? Is it just, is it just? No, all believers should be obedient, amen. Jesus was obedient, amen, to the cross. He is our ultimate example. Philippians 2 and 8 tells me, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became, the Bible tells me, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, amen. The congregation should be obedient, amen. Jeremiah 7 and 23, but this thing commanded I them, saying, obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you, glory to God. We should be obedient, amen, in our homes, amen. Ephesians 6 and 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Titus 2 and 5, to be discreet, chast, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blaspheme. Amen. And we also have what we call civil obedience, glory to God. Romans 13 and 1, it says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, the power that be what are ordained of God. Hebrews 13 and 17 says, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with what joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable uh -huh, for you. Universal question this morning, amen, for this Sunday school lesson is, are you obedient? Are you obedient? Our background this morning, we know we came off of last week, amen, last week was a wonderful lesson, amen, and how could any of us have a problem with love, amen, but we know that there was an issue with love last week, glory to God. We know that Joseph was sold to the Ishmaelites, amen. And we know that traditionally they are identified as the Midianites, amen. You can read back in Genesis, the 37th chapter, around the 26th through the 36th verse, amen. And going into the 39th verse, glory to God, we see where Joseph begins to advance, amen. But I want to point out something in the second verse that says the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. In the fifth verse, we see that later on, we know that he was made overseer over Potiphar's, Potiphar's house. The Lord blessed the Egyptian house. What? The Bible tells me for Joseph's sake. Amen. Genesis 39 and 7 through 23. We know that while in Potiphar's house. Uh -huh. Joseph refuses to sin against God by violating Potiphar's wife. She lies on him, uh huh, and Joseph is what cast into prison for doing the right thing. How many of folk have been cast into prison for doing the right thing? How many folks have been talked about, Amen, for doing the right thing, for not going along with the norm? Glory to God, for not just doing any old thing, Amen. Folks are talking about you when you don't go along with everything they say, amen. Well, we see here what Joseph, we see that Papa's wife wanted him to lie with her, amen, and Joseph denied her. And we know as we read our Bible that she lied on him, uh-huh. And we know later on that he was thrown in jail, amen. Glory to God. And while he was in jail later on, we know that Pharaoh's, uh-huh, some of his, his, uh, Butler and his baker was also thrown in jail a little bit later on. 
And while in jail, they had a dream. And it's a wonderful dream, amen. Because while in jail, we see where Joseph assisted to interpret the dream. Glory to God. As we go on, we want, to, we want everyone to understand when it comes down to those things that are spiritual, it's going to require someone who is spiritual. Glory to God. So he, they, uh, he interprets the dream. Amen. And later on, we know in Genesis, the 41st chapter, now that the dream that he interpreted uh -huh, for the butler and the baker comes true because they're out of jail now. One's dead and one's still alive. Now we have someone that uh, is uh, giving an account for what Joseph had done. Amen. Because now Pharaoh's having a dream. So Pharaoh had a dream. Amen. He had uh, two dreams. We know that Pharaoh had a dream and a butler vouches uh -huh, for Joseph. That Joseph is, then Joseph is soon after released from jail. Uh -huh. The good thing about it, I love this here. He acknowledges God. Read in verse 16. He interprets the dream in 25. Man, I can't, I just look at it. Pharaoh acknowledges God. He acknowledges the living God. How many of y'all know that? I don't care how big of a devil you think somebody body is. Let me tell you something. One thing about the living God, it does not matter how bad you are, God has a way of getting your attention. Amen. God still reigns. Amen. And we find Joseph now in a setting where now he's released from jail and now he's in a setting and he's coming forth as we come into the 25th verse of the 42nd chapter where he's about to interpret this dream for Pharaoh. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Again, we said that everybody should be obedient. Let's go to the 25th verse. Glory to God. The 25th verse says, and Joseph said unto Pharaoh, this is wonderful here now, catch it. The dream of Pharaoh is one. Mm -hmm. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. God has showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. Many times God has already given warning. Many times God has already shown folks what he's about to do. Amen. But, you know, I, I like Pharaoh here. At least, you know, he had enough sense to go to someone who could help him out. Amen. A lot of us, we're going to everybody and anybody, folks, that can't help you out. They're in a worse boat than you are. Amen. We see one here. He says, the dream of Pharaoh is one. Pharaoh dreamed two dreams. Glory to God. You go to Genesis 51 and 1 and also 51 and 5, which Joseph referenced as what? One. Both of Pharaoh's dreams pointed to what? The same event. Amen. God shows the sinner the destruction to come. A practical implication and understanding we see here in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the 14th verse, it says what? But the natural man receiveth what? Not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. So it did not matter how many people. Uh -huh, Pharaoh went to how many wise men he called in how many buddies he had amen it did not matter amen they could not interpret the, interpret the dream why because these this dream was one that was from God amen and that had to be spiritually discerned amen this is a wonderful thing here we have to remember amen when you're going and when you're having dreams and when things are going on and they're spiritual amen Stop going to the devil, amen, trying to get him to help you understand what's going on. He ain't going to do nothing but lie to you. We see here in the 26th verse, it says the seven God can. We see the cows are seven years and the seven good years. I'm talking about the grain are seven years. The dream what is one. This is one event. And the seventh thin and ill favorite can that came up after them and the seven years and the seven empty ears blessed it with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth it unto Pharaoh. Joseph reiterates that this dream that you had is one. And we go to the 29th verse. 
the 29th verse says, but there are seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. I like the way he breaks this thing down. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. So you're going to have it good for seven years and you're going to have it bad. But see, this thing is going to be so bad that you're going to forget about the good years. Amen. It's going to be so bad that you're not going to be able to remember the last seven years. Mm -hmm. And all the plenty shall be what? Forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. It's going to be so bad. Many folks today, it's so bad in this pandemic. Amen. They can't remember the last seven years because it, it, it has had such an impact. I'm talking about when an event occurs in your life. Amen. That's so bad. There's many folks out there right now where it is that their homes are burned out. Amen. We see the fires that are going on, the forest fires that are going on. There's burning many homes up in our country right now. And they just can't fathom that that was my home yesterday. I'm talking about an event that's so big, amen. And it says in the 31st verse, and the plenty shall what? Not be known in the land by reason of the famine following. For it shall be very grievous. It's not going to just be bad. It's going to be really bad. Amen. Joseph breaks this dream down. Seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And the famine will what? Overshadow the plenty. Glory to God. The 32nd verse says, and for that dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now there let Pharaoh look out a man mm -hmm, discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. What kind of man did he tell him to look for? What kind of man? Not, no, he's setting himself up here. Now he's telling, he's setting himself up just by being obedient to God. So that you could just set yourself up, amen. Just be obedient for God. We're talking about a reward, amen. Can you see the reward on the horizon? Can you see the reward right now? I'm talking about, he said, look for a discreet and wise man. As I mentioned last week in Genesis, the 37th chapter in the ninth verse, it says where scripture tell us about Joseph. He dreamed yet another dream that is was because the dream was what established by God. You remember last week when he dreamed and he went and told his brothers, amen, they didn't like it so well. Then he dreamed yet another dream, amen. And he told his brothers again and his father rebuked him, amen. The word says, but. His father acknowledged, amen, everything that Joseph said. We see here Joseph's interpretation. I'm talking about his discernment about this spiritual dream is accompanied with what? Wisdom. He said, look for a wise man. How one might deal with such a thing. He didn't just bring it. He told him, look, this is what, what, what's about to happen. And likewise, when it happens, these are the things that you need to do right now to prepare. How many of us are preparing, amen, for that season that might not be like this good season, amen? How many of us are preparing right now? We can learn a lesson from this, amen. We can learn a lesson from this, amen, in our finances, amen. We can learn a lesson from this, and amen, in our, in our homes, amen. We can learn a lesson from this in our jobs. We can learn a lesson from this in our families, amen. Cherish a good time. Store up those memories. Amen. Glory to God. Because trouble surely is on the horizon. Amen. For some. What kind of man? He said a discreet and wise man. Amen. One that does good works with meekness. When we're talking about a wise man. One that's gentle. I'm talking about a gentleman. One that's merciful. Glory to God. And without partiality and hypocrisy. A man that's a peacemaker, glory to God. We know the whole story, amen. One that's a peacemaker, not one that's a troublemaker, amen. James 3 and 13 through 18. I want to highlight James 3 and 13 where it says, Who is a wise man and what endued with what knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with what? Meekness 
of wisdom, not those that boast. You know what I'm talking about. You got a lot of folks every time they do something, they got to boast about it. They got to talk about it. They uppity, stiff neck, can't tell them nothing. Amen. I'm talking about one that's meek. The 17th verse says, but the wisdom that is what from above is what first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Amen. Sometimes you don't have any peace because you're not making peace. Amen. You're making trouble, but you want peace. Amen. If you want peace, make peace. Glory to God. We see here in this story, there's a good question. It says, how is the providence of God evident when Pharaoh asked Joseph to interpret the dream? That's a question to the class this morning. How is the providence of God evident when Pharaoh asked Joseph? to interpret his dream. First of all, before we answer, we know that providence is the love and care with which God controls all that happens. I'm talking about the timely preparation for future events. Back to the class, how is the providence of God evident when Pharaoh asked Joseph to interpret the dream? Amen. The providence of God is evident uh, and that the fact that no matter where David, I mean, not Joseph, where Joseph, a man finds himself, a man, uh, God still used him. And so when you look at the providence of God, uh, David did not was, I mean, Joseph was not focused on his circumstances. Amen. Praise the Lord or his dilemma. Amen. Praise the Lord. But he was still being used by God. So you see the providence of God even still being shown on Joseph's life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we as saints of God, we we look at where we are at in the natural versus where we are at in the spiritual. Just like the children of Israel when they was taken into captivity in the Babylonian providence and the Babylonian was mocking them and wanted them to sing. They said, how can we sing the Lord's song? in this strange land so sometimes when you find ourselves in strange situations strange circumstances uh -huh. we're trying to find out where is the promise of god where is the favor of god upon my life now amen praise the lord even in joseph's circumstances even when joseph was thrown in prison mm -hmm. amen with the baker and the butler amen praise the lord god had not forgotten him amen praise the lord so no matter how far you go down no matter how far the enemy takes you Amen. God has not forgotten us. Amen. And we can see in the lesson here, and it's wonderful, amen, where we can see that the Bible tells us multiple, on multiple occasions that what? God was with him. So now he was in prison, amen, and it's a wonderful thing. You know what I'm talking about when things happen to folks unjustly. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes people won't let it go, amen. When things happen, amen, and folks won't let it go, but we see here things that happened, something had happened to Joseph unjustly. What do we know that happened to Joseph unjustly? Joseph was unjustly, amen, from his, bro dealt with his brothers, his family, unjustly handled Joseph. And then after, you know, Joseph, you know, he started coming up, amen. He started getting another coat. I'm mean, this is a whole another, another, another lesson right here to be enough for another day because it was just wonderful. God was giving me revelation on his coat, you know, as he, as he gave, you know, Adam and Eve some, you know, some clothes. But we see here that not only was you know, he dealt unjustly with by his family. Now he is in part of his house. And he, now he's there and, his, and the wife entices him. Amen. And now he's dealt unjustly again and thrown in prison. This is a wonderful story here because we see some folks, you know, they'll find themselves bitter. Amen. They'll start, kind of find themselves struck with anger. Amen. But instead of being struck with bitter and anger, he finds himself in prison and he's still helping. He's still doing that which God calls him to do. Because we have to understand to interpret the dream, amen. We understand that the interpretation comes from God. So it's safe for me to assume that he was walking with the Lord, amen. He didn't turn the Lord in loose, amen. We didn't, he didn't say, you know what, hold on, Lord. Let me put, you know, you know, you know some say they, they joke around. Let me put my religion down for a minute. You know, they want to bless somebody out. 
and to say all kind of things and do all kind of things. Amen. No, he didn't do that. He still was walking with God. The Bible tells me God was with him even in prison after he was unjustly dealt with. Glory to God. And we have to know and remember going back to Genesis, the 40th chapter. And I went back last week for a reason to bring some clarity in the Ephesians. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpretation of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. The interpretation belongs to God. Brother teacher, uh -huh, go ahead. the thing that's so fanat uh, uh, fascinating about Joseph, he was accused of attempted rape. Come on, yes, that's what that's it. Let's yeah. keep it real. He was accused of attempted rape <laughs> because pa uh, part of her wife had a lust spirit, uh -huh. and she was lusting for Joseph. Uh huh. And Joseph, Amen. Praise the Lord, Amen. Did not entertain her, <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. He did not stroke her flesh. Uh huh. And so she screamed rape. She was hot. Amen. Yes, yeah, she was hot, and so she screamed rape because Joseph refused her. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, and to keep his relationship with the Lord, he got out of Dodge. He got out of there. He got away from the evil situation. Don't leave him behind. <laughs> he avoided. Amen. He avoided. Amen. Amen. The situation and left his coat behind. Uh -huh. And she used that as evidence as against evidence. him to say he attempted to rape her. You know, so what do we do when we are unjustly, amen, or falsely accused of something? Joseph maintained his relationship with the Lord. So going back to the providence question you asked, amen, the favor of God was still upon his life, although he was falsely accused. And we that are saved, you live saved long enough, you can be falsely accused, amen. I've been pastoring for 28 years now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've been falsely accused even as a pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I thank God I stayed the course. Come amen. on now. So you're saying God being with you is not predicated on man. Amen. And, and how they feel about you. Amen. God being with you is predicated on what? Your obedience. Amen. Stand in line with the statutes and the thing that he's called you to do. Amen. And we know that in 33 and 34, Joseph goes on to suggest what? That Pharaoh should what, appoint officers over the land to take up what the fifth part of the land produce during what the plenish years to be purchased and stored by the government instead of being sold. So now, man, you know, God, he interprets this thing and say, you know what? Here's some grace. This is how, you know, you can uh, even though it's coming. This is how, you know, that here's salvation is that even though you're living in sin. You see how this, this thing here will work out for you? If you just do what God's instructing you to do. God was yet given the sinner instruction. Amen. We could take something from that. Whether sinner, amen, or saint, amen. We need to follow God's instructions all the time. The next question here in our lesson this morning says, Why is Joseph instructive as an example of doing the right thing no matter the consequence. Why is this example mm -hmm, instructive? Uh huh. I'm talking about of doing the right thing no matter the consequence. Say, what what brings that to the light for any of us? I mean, you know, have you ever been in a situation where uh, you've had to do the right thing or you chose to do the right thing, even in the midst, Amen, of adversity, even in the midst of being falsely accused amen amen brother teacher uh why is joseph instructed as an example of doing the right thing no matter mm -hmm. the consequences is amen praise i believe is an example for us and as as a as a brother in christ is an example for me to understand that no matter what i go through in life god will not forget me amen god will not abandon me sometimes Amen. You may be abandoned by your fellow brothers and sisters. I remember a friend of mine that was incarcerated. Amen. Praise the Lord for some a few years. Amen. And those that he won to the Lord and brought to the Lord wasn't there when he was going through his amen 
uh, incarceration experience. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, I think, amen, it's an example, amen, and it helps us to understand sometimes we may not understand why a person is going through. They didn't understand Joseph, not Joseph, Job's Job. miserable comforters. Amen. That's what he called them. Did not understand why he was going through. They was telling him to come on, brother. You need to confess, because confession is good for the soul, they say. Yes, and so is now is your time because we know nothing, amen. Praise no calamity come upon anybody that's living for the Lord. So come on, Job, let's come clean, brother. Amen. Praise Lord. And a lot of time we that are been we that have been born again, we're gonna go through some things because the devil, amen, praise the Lord, has taken our bounty on our head. And uh -huh. the devil wants us dead or alive mm -hmm. amen praise the lord he said god 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 when the devil when the sons of men came presented themselves before the lord satan came also mm -hmm. and the lord asked him where come thou?" he said i've been walking to and fro up and down on the earth seeking who i can defile devour and the lord asked him have you considered my have you been considering my servant job he's a half but there's a problem you got a hedge about or hell out about him. And so, amen, praise the Lord. You take that hedge, I will get him. Amen, amen. praise the Lord. And so we go through some things because God removed the hedge of protection from around us. Amen. And that reminds me, even when I had my car accident and how the Lord came in, the Spirit of the Lord came in and said, don't kill my servant. Amen. But when that cloud left, he uh -huh. said, just don't kill him. The hedge of protection that left me, but God gave order. Don't kill my son. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so when we look at this, amen, praise the Lord. Joseph instructive is an example of doing the right thing no matter what the consequences are. We that have been born again, we that have been blood washed, we do the right thing. Regardless of the consequences, I, I I can talk I can talk how many times my my career in the military was threatened because I would not stop preaching. Amen. Amen. Praise Lord, my my career in the military was threatened by high ranking officials because I would not take down. Amen. But because of my faithfulness Amen. to the Lord, God always Amen. Praise the Lord took care of me. Amen. And some similarities where Joseph in our lesson. Amen. His obedience to God. I'm talking about not laying with Potiphar's wife was, you know, what I'm saying like Jesus obedience to the cross. Amen. We see here Luke uh, in the 11th chapter, in the 28th verse, it says, but he said, yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it and be obedient. Amen. Not just hear the word, amen, and forget about it when you leave out of church on Sunday. I'm talking about hear the word, amen, and keep it, glory to God. Uh, we can't just be hearers of the word. We've learned now uh, and we're studying in James. We also have to be what? Doers of the word. As I've given the testimony on many occasions, I remember the day when Satan came to me and said, you serious about this thing, huh? He said, well, I'm going to take all my toys back, amen. Amen, glory to God. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. You just got to hold on. Amen. Amen. What does God favor of Joseph? What does God's favor about Joseph teach us today? That if we just hold on, I'll tell anyone, I'm a living testimony. If you'll just hold on to God. Amen. And not let go. Amen. Whatever it was that, you know, the Satan had given you. Amen. God can double it. God can triple it. God can quadruple it 10 times, 100 times over. Don't worry about it. Just follow God and do what he asks you to do. Amen. The Bible tells me in Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 31st, 33rd verse, it says what? But scrap all that. Forget about yesterday. Seek ye first what? the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. If you'll just seek God. Amen. No matter what, just seek God and hold the line. Like Joseph who was appointed over all of part of his house. Amen. And was lied on and thrown in jail. Amen. God's presence is reward enough. Saints, God's presence is reward enough. The Bible tells me God was with him. Amen. God was with him when he was thrown in a hole. Amen. God was with him when he was thrown in jail. Amen. God's presence. Amen. Is enough. Amen. Just be obedient. Amen. To that which God has called you. Amen. To do. Brother teacher. But mm -hmm. even in prison, you don't feel God's presence. <laughs> 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 when you're going through and you're in the and, and you're going through 
there are times, I'm speaking from my own experience, that you just don't feel God's presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. I remember my, my, my walk with the Lord and I was going through some things. Amen. Praise the Lord for my relationship with the Lord. And there in those, I think it was about 18 months time mm -hmm. frame, I just did not feel God's presence. All I had was the word that I would never leave you nor forsake you. I didn't have nothing else to draw strength from other than the fact that I would never leave you nor forsake you. So there are some time, amen, there are some times in our life when we're going through, like Joseph went through, thrown in prison, amen, praise the Lord. We're not going to feel the presence of the Lord. We're not going to feel his favor upon us, amen. We'll be like John the Baptist in jail. Are thee the Savior? Look out for another one. Lord, are you still there? Amen. There are times when John the Baptist was in prison, he sent the disciple to Jesus, well, no, are you the Savior? Are you the Messiah? I need to know my living is not in vain. And when we're going through sometimes, Lord, are you still with me? Amen. Praise the Lord. You haven't left me, you know. And so those are the times, amen, yes. praise the Lord, when you don't feel, amen, amen. praise the Lord, God, favor upon your life. Let's stay right there just for a second. Amen. What causes a believer, amen, to come to have that position? Amen. What are some of the things that influences us to feel that way? It was a key word you used there. I love it. Amen. Because I've been speaking for some time and I, every once in a while I get up here and I start jumping around. I say, God is more than a feeling. Amen. I love it. You say, because sometimes it just doesn't feel like God is there. Amen. Whether God, we feel that God is there or not. Amen. We're still, amen. Sometimes you just got to know. And it's what you believe. You still just got to believe that God is there, whether you feel him or not. Because seeing the situation, so my question to the class was this: was simply this. What could cause us to feel that way? Some of the things I believe that causes a man or a woman to feel that way is when we find ourselves and our expectations start, they become what we call carnal to some degree, amen, where our expectation is a blessing here, amen. And the presence of God is no longer enough. But when the presence of God is enough, amen, you find out we find ourselves like Paul where he says, I have learned that whatever state I find myself in to be content, amen. Because at some point what it is, we find ourselves in the reward. We, some of us want our reward here. If you don't get a data boy over here or you don't get a data boy over there or when you're going through, all of us have been through something, I believe. I've been through something, amen. And whether I, and it's, it was many times it felt like God wasn't there, amen. But it wasn't about the feeling. It was about what I believed. I believed that God could if he chose to. I believed that God was with me, amen. The belief, believing in God is enough and knowing that his presence, that he's there, that he'd never forsake or leave you. That God's not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. God said he'd never leave you or forsake you. Unless we call God a lie. A lot of times, I believe, we find ourselves in a state, what we call a feeling, we're looking for the feeling. Sometimes when folks, they go to church on Sundays, they go to church for the feeling. I don't think they really go to have a relationship with God. They go for the feeling because of the way it makes them feel. God is more than a feeling. Amen. It's more than you coming in and you get in your emotions and you tear up and you, what's in your heart? He's more than a feeling. He's a, I mean, whoa, glory to God. He's indescribable. It's, a, it's the relationship, amen, that eternal life of that gift, just being in relationship, his presence alone is enough. I started this lesson out and I said, you're experiencing your reward right now. I'm talking about eternal life if you just maintain. I'm talking about salvation, amen. If that's not a reward, I don't know what a reward is. If any of us have lived in sin, amen, in such a manner where it was real enough for us to remember some of those things, I don't want to remember. I like I want to get to the end of this lesson. We see here just like Joseph's son, amen. I want it to be just a, something I, I don't need to remember, amen. The 37th verse, it says, and the things that was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one that... One as this is a man in whom what the spirit of God is. Man, he said, can we find a man like this? That God is with him. 
he recognized that God was with him. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God have showed thee all this, ain't much as you, you know, came up and dreamed up in your own mind. You know what I'm talking about? You going to folks that, you know what I'm saying, that's not, that has no spiritual discernment? No. <laughs> for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. He recognized the living God. He recognized that God is with him. There's none other in my kingdom. There's no other that I know that's more discreet or wise. It says, goes on to say, thou shall be over my house. Now Pharaoh, he said, thou shall be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people mm -hmm, be ruled. Man, they got to bow down to you. Only in the throne, only me, mm -hmm, will I be greater than thou. So now he, now he just, hold on for a minute. Now this is funny. Now, y'all see this story? Now, his family mistreated him. Uh -huh. He was thrown in a pit. He was sold off, amen. And then after he was sold off, now he finds himself, amen, he finds himself over Potiphar's house, amen. Now he's wrongly accused. He's wrongly accused and now he's thrown in jail, amen. He's still following God. There's something here that's, you know, what we call, we can see that steady state in this story. He's staying in line with God. If you'll just stay on course and you'll just do what God asks you to do, amen. He just continued to just move on regardless of the things that are going on around him. He's like, I, I, I'm reminded of Jesus on the boat with his disciples and things were getting chaotic in the environment, amen. And God was asleep. We find out that in all of this, amen, it didn't feel good. I keep saying God is more than a feeling. I'm sure it didn't feel good when he was in the pit. I'm sure it didn't feel good when, you know, he had made his way out of slavery and he's in Potiphar's house, amen, and he's over the house and it didn't feel good when he was wrongly accused. I'm sure it didn't feel good, amen. God is more than a feeling, amen. We have to get beyond the feeling sometimes, saints, amen. It's about what we believe. God is regardless of the situation. God is regardless of the circumstance, amen. God's bigger than your circumstance. God's bigger than your situation. God's bigger than your thoughts, amen. You cannot have experienced everything, but seeing God, amen, God knows all. He's the beginning and he's the end, amen. Glory to God. Yes, sir, brother, teacher. One thing I also noticed when you said, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. I looked at, at that, you know, one thing you always say is that figuratively, <laughs> the words you always use. Amen. Praise figuratively and symbolically. Or amen. symbolically. Yeah. That's what you always ask that question. But one thing I was looking at, and I looked at it twofold, and he was, he was saying to Joseph, this is the favor of God upon Joseph's life. He said, thou shalt be over my house. You know, otherwise I'm putting you in charge of my house, and according to all thy words shall my all my people be ruled. You know, that's favor right there. He said, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. I looked at that. So he said, look, when I'm, when I when I get up out my throne, I'm going I'm going I'm going to submit myself to you. I'm going to subject myself to you. I know I'm still king, uh -huh. but when I'm in my throne, you're going to subject. When I'm sitting in the throne, you're going to be subjected to me. But when I'm out of my throne, mm -hmm. uh, that's why I thought about that. Uh, figuratively or symbolically, but when I'm when I when I'm not in my throne, mm -hmm. I'm gonna submit myself to thee. Uh -huh. And I looked at that, Amen. Phrase that's awesome. Uh -huh. You know, no matter how you want to look at or paraphrase it, you know, mm -hmm. Pharaoh said, "Only in my throne." When I'm in my throne, Amen. in my office, in my position, uh -huh. then you, I, I, I rule you. But once Amen. I'm out of that office, in that position, mm -hmm. I'm gonna submit myself to you, mm -hmm. Amen. I thought that was something, you know, when I read that this morning, you know, for the Sun School lesson as well. Amen. Amen. Acknowledging the living God, amen, glory to God. Genesis, the 41st chapter, in the 16th verse, it says, And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. Listen now. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So now he's torn up. Pharaoh had this dream, amen, and um, this thing was bothering him, amen. But I love it, you know. When you really find a man or a woman of God, they don't try to take credit, amen, because, you know, it's not about them, amen. It's not about me. It's not about you, amen. If you find somebody, and I heard, <laughs> I haven't heard the sermon, that it's I, me, and mine, they use it just a little too much, amen. Be mindful. But I love Joseph here, amen. 
He was that he did not try to share God's glory. Amen. He said, and Joseph answered Pharaoh, the 41st verse of the six, uh, 41st chapter and the 16th verse. It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Mm -hmm. Recognizing the power of the living God. The same man thrown in jail is now ruler over Egypt beneath Pharaoh, as uh, Pastor just talked about. But as we go here, there's another question. What does Joseph, why, correction, does Joseph deserve the honor of being prime minister of Egypt? That's a question. Why do you believe Joseph deserves to be prime minister mm -hmm, of Egypt? Why did the key word here is it? Why does he deserve it? The Bible declares that you be faithful over a few things. God will make you rule over many. You know, and so it's all going back to what you've been talking about, Joseph, faithfulness, mm -hmm. you know, and everything else. And God will reward us according to the faithfulness. I remind the song, it says, you've been faithful, you've been true by uh, Luther Barnes. And then he says, and for your faithfulness is your time, you know. And so uh, it was because of uh, uh, his faithfulness, you know, that he had. And so I go back to the scripture. If you be faithful over a few, God will make you ruler and, and God will make you ruler over men. Let's go to that scripture, Matthew 25, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Matthew 25, verse 21. For those that want to know what scripture I'm coming from, amen. Matthew 25, verse 21. And he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So we be faithful just over the few things that God give us. Mm -hmm. God will make us rule over many. Amen. You know, and everything. So that's why I thought when we asked that question, because Joseph's faithfulness, and that's why I love that song by Luther Barnes, in for your faithfulness is your time. Amen. Glory to God. And now reference I had, amen, I love it. Another reference I have here is Luke, the 16th chapter, the 10th verse. He that is faithful in that which is what least is faithful also what in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Amen. We just have to be faithful over what God has given us. Amen. We see that he, when, when Joseph was in Potiphar's house, he was faithful. Amen. We understand that Potiphar, amen, was beneath Pharaoh. But we see that. Joseph was faithful, amen, in Potiphar's house, amen. And see how God just continued to grow him, amen. And we could just be faithful over the little that God has given us, amen. Some of us won't be faithful over that, amen. We're all over the place, amen. Just be faithful, amen. The 50th verse. And unto Joseph were born what two sons before the years of famine came, which and ascendeth the daughter of the priest of on bear unto him, of one of on bear unto him, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, He hath made me what forget all my toil and my father's house. And the name of the second called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. How many of y'all know that, you know what, stop stop concerning yourself with yesterday. Stop worrying about 10 years ago. I talked some time ago. Some folks, they won't let you live down 20 years ago. Every time you know, they want to hold on to things you did 15, 20 years ago. Don't worry about that. Forget about it. Because even in the midst, even in the place, even in the space where you were tormented, how many of y'all know that God will bless you? Amen, amen. Hand over hand, fist over fist. How many of y'all know that God is still able even in the midst of persecution, God is able. Amen. So why do you believe that Joseph mm -hmm, became so fruitful? Why did God cause Joseph to become so fruitful? That's a question to the class. Why do you believe that God caused Joseph to become so fruitful? Was this just to glorify Joseph? What was it? What was going on here? What's the bigger picture here? Because surely there's a bigger picture. 
Because God's bigger than me. God's bigger than you. God's bigger than Joseph. Well, it goes back to, once again, Joseph's faithfulness, number one. Mm -hmm. And then God also made a promise. He made a covenant mm -hmm. with Abraham Amen. and everything else. And Joseph being a descendant Amen. of Abraham, that covenant was passed on. And God even, it was even prophesied that the children of Israel was going to be in bondage. Amen. But God was going to bring them out. So this is a problem. This is, a, it not only has something to do with Joseph's faithfulness, it has something to do with the promises of God. And we know the Bible says all the promises of God are yea and in him, amen. And God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he said he shall do it, if he spoke, it shall come to pass. Amen. 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 Remember the promise from last week. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor. A reference, uh, look in Genesis, the 17th chapter. You can go back and look a little bit later, the fourth verse and also the seventh verse. The fourth verse says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. The seventh verse says, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to the seed after thee. Amen. We understand that, you know what I'm saying, we see here Joseph is a descendant, a direct descendant, glory to God. But I want to go on a little further here to just tell you that regardless to where you are, and there's a scripture that's commonly misused, and we're going to go to Genesis, the 50th, 50th chapter and the 20th verse. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, Listen, but God meant it unto good. It says, God meant it unto good, unto himself, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Listen, it says, God meant it unto good. Who's good? If, he, if it's meant it unto good, who is it that's good? Let me help you out. Go to Mark, the 10th chapter, and the 18th verse. You also can reference this in Luke, the 18th chapter, and the 19th verse. It says, and Jesus said unto them, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Luke, the 18th chapter, and the 19th verse says, and Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Saint God rewards obedience, amen. There's only one that's good, amen. We have to find ourselves, amen, in right relationship with him, amen. I.e. submitting ourselves to God, repenting, amen, for the things that we've done for sin, amen. Believing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and that God raised him from the dead and being obedient to his statutes. God rewards us, amen, for obedience, amen. Um, not only having what we call salvation, amen, being saved from sin, amen, but I'm talking about in the end time, amen. There's two types of rewards, amen. We talked about it. There's a reward, amen, for the saints, amen, and there's a reward, amen, for the wicked. Which type of reward do you want, amen? I want my reward, amen, the one that the saints are going to get. I want everlasting life, amen. I want to be beside Jesus, amen, as, as, as he reigns, amen, um, and not experience, you know, um, hell, glory to God. John, the 14th chapter, and the 15th verse says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I encourage you to keep the commandments of God, amen. Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Saints, continue on. Amen. Continue to move forward. Amen. Continue to allow God to use you regardless of the things that you go through. Regardless whether it's a season of plenty. Amen. Where things are just abundant. Amen. Or, amen, we find out where... This season, amen, is not so fruitful, amen, and you're going through some things. Whether it be seven days, amen, or seven years, I encourage you to just be like Joseph, amen, and continue to do the things that God had called you to do. Live an upright life, be, be an example. Even when folks come to entice you, just like 
Joseph was enticed. We find out by Potiphar's wife, many of us are enticed, amen, on a daily basis to do things that are not of God, amen. I encourage you to just stay the course. Continue to be obedient to God and God surely will be with you, amen, and walk with you and you're surely blessed, amen. And it's beyond your feeling, amen. Don't be discouraged because you don't feel God is there. Believe and know that God is there. He's not a man that he should lie. He said that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Just stay with God, amen. We understand that all these scriptures are given, amen, uh, by God's inspiration, amen. And we should continue to rightly divide the word of truth, amen. 2 Peter 1 and 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Can we see here where it is that Pharaoh needed a man of God, amen, someone that was connected, amen, had a relationship with God to discern the things of God? Find someone, amen, that is walking righteous unto God, amen. Amen. And, and develop a relationship with them in such a manner, amen, that when you're going through things, you have someone to bounce things off. I remember some time ago, I went to this church out on Tobacco Road and there was a, I think it was a men's conference, some type of, it might, might have not been a men's conference, it might have been just been a, uh, a family day or something of that nature. And, and I heard the pastor say, well, look around and, and, and grab a friend, amen, and give him your number. So that when you leave here, you have someone that you can talk to and you guys and y'all can y'all can work with one another when you're going through and also in the, in the good times. And I remember walking over to this gentleman and I, I looked at him in his face and I said, if I told you everything about me today, will you love me tomorrow? I'm talking about find someone that's of God because, you know, God don't continue to hold your past against you. Amen. Find someone who's truly loving. Amen. Someone who's meek. Amen. Someone who's forgiving. Someone who's kind. Someone who's truly loving. Amen. Those are the type of people that you need in your life as you're moving along this course. Amen. Where God has us here until his return to socialize with. Amen. Folks that are going to grow along with you. Going to love along with you. Uh, going to bear along with you. Amen. I hope that you enjoyed this Sunday school lesson. God rewards obedience. I hope that you're encouraged by listening and understanding what Joseph went through and how he maintained his relationship with God and maintained a good standing with God, that you would choose to be obedient this week. Amen. I just pray that as you move along and you, you're going through things and you find yourself in what we call, you might not be in a literal hole, but it might be a figurative hole. Some, of, some folks today might feel like you've been thrown in a hole, that you've been outcast, that your family has cast you aside. I encourage you to know that God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. You just have to continue to do the things that God called you to do, amen. That includes loving them, amen, because we know that later on, Joseph's family ended up, he had to go face to face with them. Amen. And we see this man of God. Amen. And we understand the end story that, you know, that he still with grace and mercy dealt with his family. Stop holding grudges. Amen. Stop holding. You know, some folks, they hold for they hold grudges for a lifetime. You got some family members out there that's been mad with each other for 10 or 15 years. But you call yourself a believer. Not so. Amen. You call yourself righteous. That's not a God. Amen. What if God held your faults against you? The way you hold them against the people that you love, amen, you say that you love. Love on, amen. Be obedient every day. We love you. We thank God for you. Our next service is at 1130. Um, we hope that you join. Thank you for attending this awesome service. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again and may God bless you.